My name is Tim Linger. First of all, welcome early birds. We're 10 minutes prior to the start of the webinar. Thank you for attending. I'd like to cover a couple of things. If you've never been on Zoom before, there's some buttons across the bottom that might be helpful. First of all, you can put yourself on mute, but if you want to speak, you can press the space bar. That's uh, temporarily unmutes your mic. Also at the bottom, if you want to change your background, you can do so by going to the video button and clicking on it and change virtual background. Sort of a neat little thing to do. Chat, you can go to chat and ask us a question or make a comment. And let's get started in about nine minutes. about eight minutes we'll begin. So everyone must participate in this two-hour webinar. In order to get the continuing education credits offered by the state of Florida, you must participate. By participating in the poll questions, you'll be able to get your two hours of continuing education. started in seven minutes please be ready so some housekeeping please mute your cell phones please try to avoid any distractions and definitely participate in this next two hour webinar participating means to answer poll questions if you would like to get your two hours of CEs you've, you must participate but more importantly it's not about the CEs it's about the education this program, the Heckam for Home Purchase, is going to change your career in so many positive ways and it's going to be life changing for your senior home buyers. six minutes till start time. During the webinar, there's a chat button at the bottom. Please use it, ask us questions, make comments. We'll try to get to all the questions uh, before the end of the presentation or maybe at the end of the presentation. In fact, during break, we may even answer one or two. But please ask questions because this is for you. This is for you to get the best education. If you have the question, probably someone else does too. So please, once again, ask questions.
five minutes, five minute warning. I'd like for everyone to mute their mic. I'd also like for everyone to turn on your video. It's nice to see interactions, put a name with a face. And speaking of names, how about renaming yourself to your actual name? Some people have just phone numbers sometimes. It doesn't have anything at all. So it's nice. The way to do it is go to your bottom left corner and right click on your what your name should be and just retype it. It's that simple. get started in about four minutes. Today we have several state certified instructors teaching the class. I know that you'll enjoy this class. Everybody is not only a certified HECM specialist, but they're also authorized and certified by the state of Florida. Please be ready in three minutes. So remember to chat with us as often as you can. Participate. Feel free to use the reaction buttons at the bottom of your, of your screen. Officially, two minute warning. So one minute till start time and we will start on time. As a reminder, please mute your mics, turn on your video, rename yourself by right clicking on where your name is supposed to be and ask questions in the chat box. We will try our best to answer all the questions before the end of our two hour webinar. My name is Tim Linger. I'm a certified HECM specialist. I'm also certified reverse mortgage professional and also a certified senior advisor. I've been in this industry for approximately 21 years. I am extremely knowledgeable in this program. HECM, which is the legal name, the true name of the FHA reverse mortgage. Today, we're going to learn all sorts of great things about the HECM. So thank you for joining our webinar today. I promise you, you're going to get a lot out of this. This will be a game-changing, career-changing two hours for you. Thank you for participating.
My name is Tim Linger. I'm a certified senior advisor and have been for more than 21 years. I'm also one of only 150 certified reverse mortgage professionals in the entire country. I'm a certified HECM specialist, the president of the HECM Association, and my career has been in the reverse mortgage industry for 21 years. In fact, this is all I do. It's in my blood. I understand it. I love this program. Once again, my name is Tim Linger, and I'm here to present the Florida State Certified Continuing Education course for professionals, realtors. So let's get into it. Heckam. What the heck is a Heckam? Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. It's the legal name for the FHA reverse mortgage. So the first thing I like to do is get the word reverse mortgage out of our language. This program is from FHA. It's insured. Home equity conversion mortgage. That is what a HECM is. Let's go back to 1961 when the very first known reverse mortgage was closed in this country. Nellie Young from Maine. The story goes the little old lady went to her banker and said my husband recently died and I'm living on a fixed income. I have no one to leave my house to, but I need money. Would the bank buy my house and let me live there for the rest of my life? Poof, reverse mortgages were born. And perhaps this is where the, the bad reputation came from. A lady gave her house to the bank in exchange for money with the right to live there with no mortgage payments for the rest of her life. Fast forward to 1988 when the FHA picked up on this idea using some research done by UCLA professor and Congress's research and determined that this is an amazing program for retirees. They put guidelines in place to make this program work. But guess what? Since the inception of the FHA reverse mortgage called the HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, it's never been take your house. It's always been a mortgage. I like to say a mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage. A HECM is just a mortgage with optional mortgage payments. We like to say no monthly mortgage payments, but it's just a mortgage with optional mortgage payments. Remember that. We like to get the word reverse mortgage out of our language because people think of that's where the bank takes the house. And that is the farthest from the truth as possible. FHA doesn't allow it. It's never been part of the program. Between 1961 and 1988, perhaps the private lenders were taking houses, but never, never have F FHA taken a house because of this kind of a loan. Now with any kind of a loan, there's requirements. You gotta pay property taxes, homeowner's insurance, upkeep the house, HOA. And if you don't pay property taxes, guess what? Somebody's taking the house. The FHA would foreclose on a house if certain things weren't met, but the mortgage itself, there's no payments, no, no required payments. The HECM has always been a refinance program. Even going back to 1961, when the first reverse mortgage was done, it was a refinance. In 1988, signed into law by Ronald Reagan in 1989, the first HECM was written. Fast forward 31 years, that program is still available. The Heckam refinance. 2009, during the height of the recession, Congress decided to do a twist. I like to say a, a reverse of a reverse. A twist on the old refinance program. Now they're allowing us to use the Heckam to purchase a home. Today's class is about the Heckam for home purchase. Passed in 2009, sort of got started in 2010, so just over two, 10 years ago. The program allows people to put money into a house that they're buying, putting home equity into the house that they're buying, financing the difference and owning the house. If they own the house, they can sell it when they want to, they can will it to their kids. So let's sort of think about the reverse of the reverse. First of all, a refinance is where you're taking a house and you're pulling money from it. You have home equity and you have cash. No required mortgage payments. A purchase is the same thing. You're putting money into a house and financing the difference. It's the same math. So we've been focusing 
on the Heckam for Home Purchase for 10 years now. It's finally starting to take hold. Not a lot of realtors know about this. Not a lot of senior citizens know about this program, but it's absolutely the best program in America, in my opinion. Imagine buying a home for 50% down payment and no required mortgage payments for the rest of a retiree's life. Pretty amazing. I like to call it half cost homes. Imagine buying a $400,000 home for $200,000 down. Wow. I'll say this again later in this presentation, but think about this. As a professional realtor, if someone came to you and said, I've got $300,000 cash money, sell me a home. You're excited, right? We're all excited. You're having a closing next week. You take a person to the $300,000 neighborhood, and guess what? It's not the house they were thinking about. The house they really want is $400,000. So you help them buy a $400,000 house. Your commission goes up, they have a nicer house, they put $200,000 down, they put $100,000 in, in their pocket for retirement, and now they own a house that's worth $400,000 and no required mortgage payments. I'll repeat this later in the class, but digest that. Let's move on to the first poll question. Everyone needs to participate in all poll questions. This is a con continuing education class, and we all need to participate. So the first poll question. Reverse mortgages, it's a general term, sort of like a dog, lots of dogs out there. There's pit bulls and rottweilers and domermans, German shepherds. There's poodles and shih tzus and bajans. Some are good dogs, some are not so good dogs, but they're all dogs. Reverse mortgages, there's a bunch of reverse mortgages. The good kind, the best kind, the poodle is the HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage by FHA. It's the safest loan in America. The safest mortgage in America. It is absolutely the best. Everybody should look into this program. I often say that everybody that's 62 and above should at least learn about the program because it is a game changer. It is a financial game changer. If a person is living paycheck to paycheck, Social Security check to Social Security check, if they're living on a million dollars, $10 million in the bank. It doesn't matter. This is an amazing financial planning tool. It helps with taxes, income taxes, investments. No required payments. Interest rates are super low. Buy a home with it. Refinance a home. But let's go back to reverse mortgages and the comparison to a dog. So as I've said before, as I often say, we have to get the word reverse mortgage out of our primary language. This is a Heckam reverse mortgage, absolutely. A Heckam is a reverse mortgage, and it's okay to say Heckam reverse mortgage, but we gotta use the word Heckam. If you were a dog breeder, for an example, and you were selling Shih Tzus, a lot of Shih Tzus are all love, you wanna advertise that you have a sweet kind of a dog. You have a Shih Tzu. If you're breeding guard dogs, you wanna advertise Pit bulls. Sorry for the pit bull lovers out there, but as a comparison. So a reverse mortgage could be a proprietary, a portfolio loan, it could be a jumbo, it could be a municipality kind of a reverse mortgage. There's lots of reverse mortgages. Let's call a heckam a heckam. That's my whole point. Let's use another analogy, a fruit. You've got a sweet strawberry, you've got a sour lemon. They're both fruits. But if you're gonna be selling strawberries, you wanna, you wanna call it a strawberry. Once again, the Heckam reverse mortgage is not the only kind of reverse mortgage. This happens to be the biggest and the best. In fact, almost every reverse mortgage in the country is a Heckam. There is Jumbo. There are very good reverse mortgages out there. Jumbo proprietary, they call them all sorts of different things. Those are safe as well, but they're not sponsored by HUD. They're not insured by FHA. Once again, the Heckam, the FHA Heckam, is the best and the safest type of reverse mortgage in the country. No required monthly mortgage payments. Remember that key phrase. The HECM has no required monthly mortgage payments. Many times people will say, no payments, no monthly payments. It's true. 
but I like to throw the word required, no required. And the reason is because one of the negativities about this loan is if you do a reverse mortgage, if you do a HECM, eventually you're going to owe more than the house is worth. That is false. It's false. Could it happen? Absolutely. We'll get into that later in the presentation. But in the short term, we're going to send a monthly statement to the client. They have the option to pay it or not pay it. If they don't pay it, then the balance goes up each month. But it's their choice. It's their choice to make a payment or not make a payment. It's their decision. Every month we're going to send them a, a monthly statement. It'll say clearly this is not a bill. It'll show them how much the interest is accumulated for that particular month and they can file it away or they can pay it. Now if they decide to pay it, this program has a built-in line of credit. As long as they do the adjustable rate, which is the most popular HECM in the nation, just about everyone does the adjustable rate. Again, we'll get into that later too, the pros and cons between a fixed and an adjustable. Most people do the adjustable and here's why. Here's one reason why. Any payments that are made goes to pay down the balance of the mortgage and the exact amount goes into a line of credit that can be borrowed later at no charge. Paying down the balance saves interest being charged and adding the money to a line of credit with the built-in growth feature gives them additional spending power later. It's like a, like a double spread. Again, we'll get into that later. Reverse mortgages. Three types are recognized by the FTC. The FHA, HECM, proprietary, which are private, usually, not always, usually jumbos. Proprietaries are usually jumbos. There are some lenders that I believe will go down to $300,000. And every program has pros and cons. The jumbo program, the proprietary, has pros and cons. So never ever dismiss a private reverse mortgage. The HECM, FHA HECM is the best. Most people do the FHA HECM for all the, the reasons we're discussing. The third type of reverse mortgage, which is seldom done, but it's available in most states and most counties in America, and it's the municipality. In other words, it's a property tax deferral. It's a single purpose reverse mortgage. So once again, this program is about the HECM, and in particular, the HECM for home purchase. Let's answer this poll question. And remember, we all need to participate with all the poll questions in order to get the continuing education credits. Your client comes to you as a realtor and says, I've got cash. It's like a trophy, right? If a person can write a check for cash for a $500,000 house, that's an award. They've done well in life. If they can stroke a check for a $200,000 house, another trophy. Cash sales are always king. Cash sales are not what should be done for retirees. Cash is king. Cash flow is king. It's interesting. A person comes to you with $300,000 cash and you're excited. You're having a closing next week, right? The house they really want is $350,400. They could stroke that check out, but they really want that other house. And the only way to get the, the nicer house is to get a, a small mortgage. $100,000 mortgage payments are $400 a month. No big deal. It is a big deal because a 70 year old, as an example, would be committing themselves to a 30-year mortgage for the rest of their life. When someone says to you, I want to pay cash for the house, other than that ego factor that they can stroke a check for a house, what they're really saying is I don't want a mortgage payment. And they're right. No one wants a mortgage payment in retirement. Life may be good. Husband and wife married, credit's great, income is fine, they've got money in the bank, to get ready to write a check out for a house. But what's gonna happen in the next 30 years? Let's just say they live another 30 years. First of all, it's a commitment for probably the rest of their life. But what's gonna happen? One of them will probably pass away. What does that do? Income, lowered. They're probably going to have some financial issues. Could be health issues. They might need a new roof, new air conditioner, new car. Their kids may call and say, Mom, Dad, I need some money, I've got an emergency. 
They might, might want to help their grandkids through college or, or their kids buy a house or maybe their kids get a divorce. There's all sorts of life events. Cash is king in retirement and cash flow is king. Once again, when someone says to you, I want to pay cash for a house, stop. If they're 62 and above, I believe that we all have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we do what's best for our clients. Morals and ethics. Consider a HECM, half down, no required monthly mortgage payments. Possibly, you as a professional realtor can sell a nicer house, which is what they want. We all want a nicer house. They want our dream house, we're retiring, for half cost. Take that same $300,000 cash sale and turn it into a $400,000 HECM sale, or a $500,000, even a $600,000. Remember, morals and ethics, what is best for your client? Always do the right thing, and the right thing will always come back to you. They need to be able to afford the taxes, the insurance, the upkeep of a more expensive house. Always do the right thing. Make it a heckum for home purchase. 50% down payment. That's quick math. Age has its benefits. A 62-year-old, the down payment for a 62-year-old might be 52%, approximately. Where a 70-year-old might only have to put down 45%. Where a 75-year-old may only have to put down 40%. Now, we don't have hard numbers because it's not how it works. There's three things, three primary things. One is, what is the house worth? If it's a $600,000 house or a $700,000 house or a $750,000 house, the percentage of everything would be lower closing costs as let's say a $50,000 house, right? Closing costs percentage wise would be higher on a lower value house than it would be on a higher value house. So the rule of thumb is, is that it's 50% down payment. Closing costs are built into this program. So when we talk about 50% down, just forget the age, 62 plus, 50% down including closing costs. You as a realtor can use that math in your head. Somebody of any age above 62 can purchase a home for 50% down, including the closing costs, or at least most of them. Once again, if someone comes to you and says, I have $400,000 cash money, quick math in your head, you can sell them an $800,000 home. The best question, this question, the rhetorical question of the day, how many homes could you sell, Mr. and Ms. Realtor, if all homes or half cost? All of them. The answer is all of them. If every house in the state of Florida were on sale today and today only, every day for a heck of them, but they were all half cost. Exciting. If your customers knew that they could buy just about any house out there for half down payment, how many of those could you sell? All of them. Safety. Safety. Non-recourse. What does non-recourse mean? Non-recourse means there's no recourse. There's no gotcha, no coming back at you. Non-recourse. The safest loan in America. Why? If something bad happens, this is an FHA insured loan. If the house were to go down in value. Now, FHA says going back almost 100 years, homes always increase in value around 4%. Some states less, some states more. But homes always increase in value. There's always bumps up and down. Housing, housing prices go up 10%, sometimes they go down 10%. But on average, homes always increase. What if, what if someone did a heckum at the height of a real estate market, and then when they were done with the house, they passed away, let's just use that as an example. And it's determined that the house is worth less than what the balance of the loan is. It's possible. Most, in most cases, it's because the house went down in value, not because the interest has accumulated to the, to the point where it exceeds the value of the house. But it doesn't matter. If something bad happens, if the lender were to fail, the lender doesn't honor the contract, if the house goes down in value, the balance of the mortgage is higher than the value of the house. When the clients are done with the house, if it's determined that the house is underwater, FHA will bail the estate out. If the people want to sell the house in their lifetime and it's determined that it's not worth what's owed, 
FHA will make up the loss. It's non-recourse. There's no tax hit. There's no estate hit. There's no write me a check hit. The family can come in and take the Cadillac out of the driveway, take all the, all the furnishings, take everything from the bank accounts. Only the house is used as collateral to secure the debt on this loan. It's the safest loan in America. All right, next poll question. So when is the Heckam due? This is a lifetime loan. It's not a 30-year mortgage, it's not a 40-year mortgage, it's not a 10-year mortgage. This is a lifetime loan. When is the loan due? In most cases, people will do a Heckam with the intentions of living there for the rest of their life. So whatever lifetime is. Now if you read the contract, lifetime is at age 150. We're not there yet. It is possible that one day we'll live to 150, but currently the loan is due when they're done with the house or they change the title. With all mortgages, the title to the property must be the borrower, the mortgage. The loan is due when the terms of the contract are violated. If a person does not pay property taxes, with all mortgages, you got to pay property taxes. You got to pay homeowners insurance, homeowners association, maintain the house. You must live there. It's got to be your primary home. You can go on vacation. You can be gone for months in a row. You can be a snowbird. That's okay. It must be your primary home. The loan is a lifetime loan unless you violate the terms of the contract. A local newspaper had headlines. It said something like, widow loses home due to reverse mortgage. Oh my gosh. Press just love bad news. Sells, sells media, sells newspapers. I read the article. She lost her home because she didn't pay her property taxes. Now, ultimately the lender foreclosed because property taxes take precedence over the mortgage. So probably what happened was the mortgage, the, the lender paid the property taxes and then said you need to reimburse us and if it's not done then yes they're going to start foreclosure. What the article didn't say is that this person would have lost the home if the house was completely paid for. Right? It would have been a tax deed sale, somebody would have foreclosed on her. So the headline was misleading. Widow loses home due to reverse mortgage. No, widow loses home because she didn't pay her property taxes. So who is eligible for the Heckam? The rule of thumb is 62 and above. Age 62 and above is people that can qualify. There is no upper age limit. A person could be 109. The oldest reverse mortgage borrower that I know of was 106, 109 in that range. And you think someone that old doesn't have a lot of life expectancy left, which is true. However, we all need cash. That particular person needed money for home health care. They might live six months, they might live six years, right? Doesn't matter. But the lowest age is 62, with exceptions. If a 62-year-old borrower is married, married, legally married to someone under 62, we can do this loan for both of them. We can go all the way down to age 18. If a 62-year-old is married to an 18-year-old, we can do it. Now we're going to base the loan on the youngest person's age. So in reality, what happens is a 62-year-old might be married to a 55-year-old. We're going to base the down payment for the Heckin' for Home Purchase on the 55-year-old's age. So we talk about 50-50 math, hmm, guess what? It might be a 60% down payment for that particular scenario. Who else is eligible? They must have a social security number. They must have a social security number to do this loan. They do not have to be a US citizen. They need to have the right to live in this country and preferably for a number of years. Remember the requirements of this loan. It must be your primary home. So if a worker was coming to this country for a three year term, a work visa, yeah, we could do the loan. But is it the right thing to do to put somebody into a loan that you know is going to be due when they leave the country because it won't be their primary. So again, U.S. citizenship is not required to do a HECM. A person must be married legally, so it doesn't matter if it's a same-sex marriage, they just have to be married legally. It's got to be a recognized marriage in the United States. Alright, we just discussed the last 
segment. So the poll question should be easy for you. Which homes qualify? The quick answer is they all do. Every home out there, as long as it's move-in ready, repair, homes that are in disrepair need to be fixed before closing. No repair set-asides. Single-family homes, cluster homes, villas, cabins, cottages, they all qualify. Manufactured homes qualify. Now each one have, have certain rules, but let me give you some advice. As a rule of thumb, stay away from condos. They're, they're difficult. There's all sorts of rules. The condo must be FHA approved, or we could try to get the single unit approved, except the single unit approval is just as complicated as getting the whole building approved. It's the same procedure, same paperwork. So condos are difficult. 12 years ago, a lot of condos in America were FHA approved. Housing crisis hit us and a lot of all condos got unapproved instantly actually in like 2011 and condos have been very slow of getting themselves reapproved. there's got to be mostly owner occupied they have to have money in reserves 10 percent has to go into reserves every month every year there's a lot of rules and most condos are not approved and most condos aren't willing to get approved now if you happen to have a condo that you'd like to to sell in First of all, let's check the hud.gov website under condos and do a search to see if that building is approved. If it's not, then let's get them approved now. Let's get the building approved now before you start selling in that building. There's a lot of condos that are very 55 plus friendly. Those would be great to get, get approved. It is possible to get buildings approved. I don't want to scare people that condos are not possible because they are possible. They're, they're possible in two ways. So first of all, let's try to get them FHA approved because it's a game changer. The building needs to participate in the process. Many lenders will help get a building approved at no charge, but the building, the condo management company, the board needs to participate in getting it done. Typically there's no charge for them to do it. A lot of times they want to charge you for documents, charge somebody for documents. But if we can get them approved, if a lender can get them approved at no charge, maybe we can barter it out. The other way is the proprietary reverse mortgages. They're not FHA, they're not the FHA HECM, but these proprietaries don't have to have the building approved. They still want documents just like any lender would, but the building does not have to be FHA approved. And some lenders will come way down to around 300,000, I believe. So in other words, if you have a condo that's worth 200,000, no lender is going to touch it on the reverse side. Construction, new construction, yes we can do it. Now there's always a catch, right? Wherever there's a good, there's a bad. So let's talk about the good, bad, and ugly. Construction, yes. New builds, yes. But a construction loan, no. FHA doesn't like draws. If a person decides to sort of build their own home, where they go out and get a construction loan, a bridge loan, and they take draws so they can pay the contractors as the home is being built. FHA wants a one year wait since the loan was opened. It sort of uh, negates the, the whole construction loan kind of process. However, if they go through a contractor where the contractor builds the home and then they have a closing, we'll do it. A builder will do it. Model home, new home construction, custom built home, that's all fine. It's the bridge loan that FHA has a problem with. And speaking of FHA, if you're a realtor that does FHA loans, remember this, this is an FHA HECM. HECMs have different rules than traditional FHA financing. The fees are different, the rules are different, the requirements are different. We don't have a debt to income ratio, we don't have a credit score requirement. There's all sorts of things that are different. So in a sense, erase your head, clear your mind from what you think you know about FHA loans. We don't have a county lending limit like traditional FHA financing does. Our lending limit is well over $700,000. We also can do multiple plexes, duplex, triplex, quadplex, singleplex, i.e. single family home. But think about this, financial planning, we'll get into that, financial planning. You can help your clients purchase a duplex, quadplex, and we can do the heck on the whole plex, financial planning. 
They live in one unit and they rent out the rest. Income, cash flow. We can do up to four, up to four plexes. You as a realtor would sell a more expensive property. The customer would live in one and rent out the other units. Cash flow. No payments required on any of the units. Amazing. Down payment. Now, Heckams have rules. The best way to remember this is that you must, your clients must have cash as their down payment. They can get the cash from family. They can get cash from friends. They can get cash from friends. The cash must be gifted to them, but they must have cash. They cannot borrow money in order to come up with the cash. They can get the cash from the 401k, the IRA, from their bank. They can get the cash from the sale of their current home, but it must be their cash. So I've had clients ask me, well, I can put 20% down and I can borrow the other 30%. No, you have to have approximately 50% cash down payment. Life insurance, if they want to get a cash from their life insurance, if they want to pull cash from a 401k, they've got to pay taxes on that, but they have to have the cash. So remember this, you cannot borrow money to borrow money. You must have the 50% down approximately to purchase a Heckam. Next poll question, how much of the money can be gifted from family or friends? Funds that are not allowed. Down payment assistance programs as an example. It may be a grant, it may be forgivable, but it's still indirectly borrowed money. You cannot borrow money from your credit card. I've had people ask me, what about I get a home equity line of credit on my primary home and use that money to purchase the Heckam for Home purchase as my second home? Well, A, it's gotta be your primary home. But no, you cannot borrow money. Now there's always, always ways around it. FHA wants to know where the money came from, but they only care where it came from if it came from somewhere in the last two months. So there's always ways around it. But we're gonna know, the lender's gonna know where the money came from if you borrow it from, your, from a home as a home equity line of credit. They're gonna know, and the reason they're gonna know is it's gonna show up on the credit report. However, we don't have to source that money if you borrowed it from another home more than two months ago. It's gonna show up on the credit report as a monthly expense. We have to explain that and we have to make sure that the income that you have, that your client has, is enough to cover that payment along with the property taxes and other property charges for the Heckam home that your clients are buying. Out of pocket fees and expenses. So as a rule of thumb, the closing costs are rolled into the loan and is part of the down payment, the 50%. As a rule of thumb, it's all included. However, what comes out of the borrower's pocket is approximately $500 for the appraisal. Now, on a more expensive house, let's say a $750,000 house, the appraisal fee may be higher. But as a rule of thumb, $500 for the appraisal. Also, because this is a federal government housing loan, heck em, FHA requires a telephone session, a counseling session, the borrowers have to go through. The cost is usually $150. It does vary between counseling agencies, but it is a cost that the borrowers have to pay for up front. So $500 for appraisal, $150 for counseling is their, is their out-of-pocket cost. Now, if they're buying a home with the Hackham, they usually have earnest money, but that's part of the 50%. Other things that they could pay for and probably should pay for would be a home inspection. Not an appraisal, but a home inspection. We do not require that. Heckums do not require a home inspection. It's advised. Termite inspection, we don't require it, but it's advised. So if they decide to do those kind of inspections, it would be money out of their pocket. Let's talk about some of the closing costs. I like to break the fees into three categories to sort of make sense. So once again, the closing costs are rolled into the loan. And some people will say that this is a very expensive loan. And I would tend to agree with them because of closing costs. Especially in Florida, we have some taxes that other states don't have. So we do have pretty high closing costs in the state of Florida. 
but there's something to be said for not having a monthly mortgage payment for the rest of their life. Short term, it looks like an expensive loan. Long term, it's probably one of the cheapest loans. Interest rates are low, no required monthly mortgage payments. But let's talk about the three categories of closing costs. So you have the third party fees, doc stamps, intangible tax, title fees, title insurance, all the stuff that go with mortgages. Those fees are gonna run about 2% of the home's value. Just rule of thumb, if a house is worth 300,000, about $6,000 in closing costs. It is what it is. Then you have the FHA fee, FHA's insurance premium. This is where the non-recourse comes from. FHA charges a fee of 2% of the appraised value for the non-recourse feature to guarantee to the, to the uh, owners that they can never be a burden to their children. And by the way, that is one of the biggest concerns that people have. I never want to be a burden to my children. I don't want to leave my ch children a debt. So that the non-recourse feature is a huge selling point on this FHA loan. 2%, another $6,000. $6,000 in third-party fees, 2%, $6,000 in FHA fees, 2%, $12,000, and we still have a lender's fee. The lender's fee is also 2% of the appraised value up to a maximum of $6,000. So we're looking at $18,000 on a $300,000 house. The lender's fee is optional, but here's why it's there. It covers processing, underwriting, overhead, commissions, and so on. But the real reason it's there is to buy down the interest rate. Three things determine how much the down payment's gonna be. The value of the house, the youngest person's age, and the interest rate. The lower the interest rate, the more the lender is able to lend. The higher the interest rate, the less FHA will allow us to lend. So if we can get the interest rate low, in other words, we use the 2% down, 2% lender's fee, to buy down the interest rate. If we can get the interest rate low, that origination fee is no big deal because the amount of money that we're able to lend the borrower far exceeds the, the 2%. If you give your borrower a choice of putting down $200,000 or putting down $210,000, almost 100% of the time they will choose the lower down payment. So interest rate, the lower the interest rate, the less the down payment. The lender's fee is to buy down the interest rate. FHA fee, lender's fee, third party fees, it is what it is. No required mortgage payments is a game changer. A beautiful marriage, financial planning. Oh my gosh. This is one of the best financial planning tools that any financial planner has heard about. No required monthly mortgage payments is massive. However, that's not the best part. The best part is using the HECM in a financial planning way to enhance a person's income or to reduce taxes or to increase the net worth. Wow, the things we can do. I tell you, if you're really, really interested in, in financial planning, we're gonna discuss it for the next five or 10 minutes or maybe more, but ask us for a report, a financial planning report. Let me give you an example. Dr. Wade Fowle is probably our industry's biggest proponent, supporter, of the Heckam and financial planning. He has founded a, a designation called Retirement Income Planning Professional, something similar to that. Obviously, I'm not that, but I follow him. And here's an example. He has a, a white paper, a, a report, that explains how financial planning and a Heckam go hand in hand. A financial planner's job is to make their assets, a person's assets and income, last as long as possible. Usually age 95 is a good number to go with. In the financial planning world, there's a software, it's a Monte Carlo kind of a thing where you enter data, you enter the, the customer's information, all their assets, their income, potential inheritance, you just enter all sorts of stuff, and then you play the what if game. What if? What if interest rates went through the roof? What if home values go down? What if their spouse became ill and died early or went to a long-term care facility? So you enter all this information and you run the scenario 10,000 different ways. It's absolutely amazing. The solution for every problem that seems to hit is to include home equity. In fact, it's just about required to include home equity into a financial plan. Home equity does not have to be a heckam, does not have to be a 
a reverse mortgage of any kind. It could be just a home equity line of credit. It could be a mortgage. But you have to include home equity to make the plan work. The best home equity is a mortgage that does not require a payment. Now maybe the plan is to make a mortgage payment. Maybe the plan is to pay down the balance and increase the line of credit for future spending power. It also makes sense to do a HECM, take no money, and let the line of credit grow. In fact, we haven't even discussed the line of credit. Built into this program, built into the HECM, is a line of credit growth feature. It pays whatever the current interest rate is plus a half a point more. So for an example, if the current interest rates are 3%, the line of credit would grow at 3.5%. It would give a person more spending power over the years. As FHA says, homes increase in value, so why not allow lines of credit to increase in value? The Heckam line of credit is not freezable. It's a contract. FHA says, we're going to promise you that whatever you have in your line of credit will not be frozen or canceled by the lender. In fact, whatever you have in the line of credit will grow at 3.5%. Now here's where financial planning and realtors come into play. Imagine this. As most salespeople, our incomes are like this. We sell a house and we make a lot of commission. And then we don't sell a house and we have less commission. And all salespeople have incomes like this. We're commissioned salespeople because we can make more money than an hourly wage person, typically. But the problem is we're doing this with our income. What a lot of realtors do is they do a HECM. Have to be 62 to do it, of course. They do a HECM, and then they set up an income stream, say $2,000 a month, coming from the HECM every month. $2,000 a month. Paychecks are steady. When a commission comes in, they pay back the line of credit, which pays down the balance, increasing the, the spendable money and the $2,000 continue. Think about that. As a commission only employee, realtor, you have the ability to do a HECM and have steady income. Just constantly put money back into the line of credit and keep getting that, that check every month. Retirees can work the same way. Now let's get a little bit more complicated. Social Security. Wow. At age 62, a person has the ability to draw Social Security. The problem with drawing Social Security at 62 is that you're taking a discount. Let's use some simple math. If you're entitled to $1,000 a month in Social Security benefits, but you have to do it at full retirement age, which is 67, well, if you take it at 62, you're not getting $1,000. You're getting maybe $700. If you wait, not 67, but wait till you're age 70, and you draw it at an older age. Instead of getting a thousand, you might get thirteen hundred. But who can wait to age seventy to get more than the retirement benefits? We work all of our lives to get that check. But who wants to get Social Security at sixty-two? Hmm, probably nobody. But they do it because well, it's money. Or maybe they know they're not going to live much longer, and it makes financial sense to do it. But wouldn't it be nice if you have your health? and you can wait to full retirement age to get the full check. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, how do you do it? Home equity without a mortgage payment. Home equity without a required monthly mortgage payment. Instead of getting Social Security at 62, do a HECM. Withdraw money, $1,000 a month. And then when you turn 67, then you can cancel the HECM as far as the, the monthly payments and, and draw Social Security. And poof, you got best of both worlds. Proceeds from a HECM is not taxable, especially consider a HECM if a person is still working at 62, because then you have income caps. So if your income, if the Social Security income cap, cap let's say is $17,000, and you make more than $17,000, then you got to start paying back your Social Security at 50%. 50%, five zero tax rate up to a certain limit. You could pay back $5,000 a year of your Social Security money. So working and drawing Social Security has got limitations. The HECM is a fantastic financial planning tool. I would encourage everyone to consult a financial planner to determine what's best for you. And this goes for realtors and non-realtors. This is a fantastic plan financial planning tool when it comes to income and taxes. Financial planning and the Heckam, the perfect marriage. 
more reasons why. Rockefeller once said that you can get rich or richer by using other people's money. Now, the Heckam is truly your money. It's your client's money. It's home equity. But the interest rates are low and there's no required mortgage payments. The things that a person can do with this extra money that would enhance, enhance the net worth. For example, buy a rental home, pay cash for it, no, no required mortgage payments and have rental income. Buy duplex, quadplex. Your clients can use the Heckam to actually increase their net worth. The Heckam for home purchase is currently allowed by the IRS for the interest to be tax deductible. Now think about this. No required mortgage payments means that you can't deduct the taxes, the interest off your taxes because you haven't made a mortgage payment. But once the once a payment is made, it applies to the interest. So at the end of the year, your clients will get a 1098 from the IRS or from the lender for the IRS taxes. Imagine this, financial planning. Imagine this. A person goes a number of years without making any mortgage payments and then come December they write a check out to the lender for ten, twenty thousand dollars which gets applied to the interest. There's a, there's a pecking order. It goes to the FHA fee, the interest, and then to the principal. But they'll get a 1098 showing that they paid X number of dollars towards the interest which they can use off of that year's taxes. Saving let's just say they have a banner year, their, their stocks were doing well and income was good and they got this huge tax bill. Pay something on the HECM, get a 1098 and use it as a tax write-off. And then guess what? Because whatever is paid gets added to the line of credit using a, a HECM arm, a adjustable river rate mortgage, which means they can re-borrow it at no charge. December they, they pay the tax bill, January they get a refund, no charge. Yes, it's allowed. It's allowed and it's almost expected because that's how the program was set up 30 years ago. I have clients that tell me that they want their house to be paid off when they pass on because they want to leave their house to their children. As a realtor, you know the answer to this. As a realtor, you know that when someone passes away, the kids inherit the house. And I use the word kids because there's usually more than one child, right? What does two children do when they inherit a house? What does one child do when they inherit a house? They sell it, right? They sell it. They sell it for a couple of reasons. One is because it's the cash that they want, right? They don't want the house, they want the cash. So they sell the house. Now mom and dad may have worked hard to leave the house to the family because they think the kids want it. Even if the kids do want it, what do the kids do with one house and there's two children? They gotta sell it, unless one buys out the other. But also, you may not want to live in Florida. The kids are probably in Wisconsin. They may not want to come to Florida. Maybe they're not ready to retire. Maybe they do want to come to Florida, but it's not the house they want. They want something that's on the water on a golf course in a 55 plus community. Who knows? Almost always the kids will sell the house. It's the cash that they want. A financial planner once told me this. Parents would probably turn over in their graves if they knew this that it takes approximately 57 days for the children that inherit all this money from their parents, 57 days to spend it all, gone. Now, I'm not saying they wasted the money. They may have paid off their house, they may have paid off their cars, they may have, they may have gone to Vegas, but 57 days is a statistic that financial planners use, that the, the inheritance is gone. And to put that in perspective, mom and dad worked 57 years of their life, times two, to accumulate what they have. And in 57 days, newfound money that the kids inherited is not as important to them as it was for mom and dad to have saved this and scraped and conserved and, and did without so they can leave something to their family. And the kids, it's like winning the lottery. Let's just spend it. Now, no disrespect intended. It's just the way life is. Hard-earned money is respected. Found money is, is not. Let's talk about mortgages. Again, financial planning. Did you know that approximately the first 10 years, the first 10 years of a regular mortgage is almost all interest? That $400 mortgage payment, $800 mortgage payment, almost all of that goes right to interest. 
for approximately the first 10 years. So when someone says that I want to have a regular mortgage, I want to make monthly payments because I want to pay down that balance. Well, if they're in their 60s or 70s or 80s, the first 10 years isn't going to go anywhere anyways. They're still going to owe what they, what they started with. The HECM allows people to make that mortgage payment if they want to. So it's the same mortgage. In fact, I like to say this, a mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage. If you have to have a mortgage, do you want a mandatory mortgage payment where the first 10 years of payments go to interest? Or do you want an optional mortgage payment where if you wanted to pay the interest you could or not make the payment at all? Once again, if a mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage and your clients own a house and as owner they take, pay the taxes and the insurance, do they want a mandatory mortgage payment or an optional mortgage payment? Keep, keeping in mind that cash and cash flow is king in retirement and financial planners love the heck em. If your clients go to see a financial planner, make sure they go to a financial planner that understands the heck em. You know, the bad news travels first, and we've all heard horror stories about reverse mortgages where the bank takes the house or the house goes underwater because the balance exceeds the value of the house. There's horror stories out there about everything. The Church of Christ, I'll bet there's horror stories about God. But do you believe it? Knowledge is power. The Heckam is the safest loan in America. It's the best. I live and breathe this 21 years in, in this industry. Everybody should understand how the Heckam works, especially in retirement. Financial planning and the Heckam is the perfect marriage. So many reasons. I could probably go on for hours, but to keep it short and sweet, qualified money. That means money that's never been taxed. An IRA is typically qualified money. There's a Roth IRA. But qualified money means that if you take the money from the account, then you have to pay taxes, income taxes. Now, IRAs require a withdrawal at age 70 and a half. Whether you need the money or not, you have to start taking it. So a lot of people will take the minimum distributions. And I've had people tell me that why would a millionaire do a heckum? Why would somebody with two or three or four or five million, ten million do a heckum? Oh my gosh, we could get into this for a long time. Because those funds are set up in such a way, if it's done professionally, to try to avoid some income taxes and some capital gains taxes. They're, they're positioned. And the last thing a person wants to do is have to sell stocks or bonds or, or assets in order to pay taxes. So a heckum provides tax-free income using home equity. Someone once said that if you do a HECM, a reverse mortgage, the home will go down in value. How does a home know that there's a mortgage attached to it? How does the home say, oh my gosh, there's a HECM attached to the house, I'm going down in value? No. The house goes down in value, it is because of the market. If the house goes up in, the, in value, well, it is because of the market. So a HECM, no required monthly mortgage payments, use the money for any purpose, including paying taxes, and also to delay selling or withdrawing from qualified accounts. It makes a ton of sense. The HECM is rechargeable, meaning that you can put the money back in, it pays the interest, you'll get a 1098. Again, tax reasons why HECMs are good. Selling stocks or bonds or investments when it's not the best time to sell it. For example, the stock market is up, it might be a good idea to hang on to the stocks. If stock market goes down, you typically don't want to sell your investments at that time. The HECM is like a bucket of money. It's a line of credit, home equity, it's a bucket of money. Your savings account's a bucket of money. Your investments are a bucket of money. And depending on what's going on with the economy is which bucket you want to take the money from. Financial planners understand this. So financial planning and the HECM can actually increase a person's net worth. $10 million in the bank? Absolutely. A story I heard once, which is quite amazing, a person with tons of money, $20 million, $30 million, a lot of money, whatever that was, they got a tax bill. Their investments did so well, they got like a $5, a $5 million tax bill. The financial planner probably goofed. They did a jumbo proprietary reverse mortgage, pulled out money from home equity in order to pay the IRS. Imagine if that particular product was not available and they had to sell stocks in order to pay taxes because someone didn't do their job, i.e. a financial planner wasn't keeping an eye on things. So whether a person is rich or 
living paycheck to paycheck, Social Security check to Social Security check, a heck of makes sense when it comes to financial planning. A poll question is coming up. One of the concerns for our clients that they don't want to be a burden to their family. We don't know what's going to happen in the future when it comes to, to values of anything, stocks, bonds, homes. The Heckam's non-recourse feature pretty much guarantees to the family that mom and dad are not going to be a burden. They can do a Heckam and if, if the home goes down in value, the non-recourse feature will protect the family from being burdened. There's no IRS hit, no deficiency judgments, no, the estate cannot be hit by a home that has gone down in value and a loan balance with the Heckam exceeding the home's value. The kids could say, here's the keys, I'm done, and no harm done. So the Heckam in a down market makes sense. The non-recourse feature makes the Heckam the safest loan in America. Now for the slide. And remember, it's important that you answer all the questions, every slide, every poll question, because this is how you get your two hours of CE credits. So let's go ahead and take a break now. We have five minutes. Normally we'll do a 10 minute break, but let's do a five minute break and we'll try to finish this webinar early. The first half of this meeting has been fantastic. Some, some questions came in and go ahead and, and take your break, come back. But to fill the time, let's go ahead and answer one of the questions. So one of the questions says, this sounds like an amazing program. How come more realtors don't know about this? Wow, um, I tell you that the reason is is that this particular program, the Heckam for Home Purchase, has been around for just over 10 years. And how do real, realtors learn about this program? It's from education agencies like ours, the Heckam Association, or it's from reverse mortgage Heckam loan officers. Not too many realtors know about this across the country. A lot of times they're focused on selling homes. And this is a loan. Realtors don't need to know about loans, or, or do they? Realtors need to learn about how to sell homes. Now, we're in a unique state. There's 24% of the population in Florida is senior citizens. So, in my opinion, every realtor should know about this program because one out of four buyers, one out of three buyers actually, is someone who's 62 and above. So, we as an agency, the Heckam Association, are doing our best to get the word out. And then realtors need to tell other realtors and get more people in these classes and spread the word. But it's coming around. The Heckam refinance has been around for over 31 years. The purchase has been around for just over 10 years. Now the next question is sort of similar to the first question is, how come more seniors aren't using this program? Well, first of all, I believe it's education. They don't know about the program. Number two is, reverse mortgage. As we mentioned before, the reverse mortgage by name is, is, is a nasty word. People think badly of it. And then even if they understand it and they realize this is an amazing program, the word reverse is such, has such bad stigma that they're afraid to tell their friends and family that they did a reverse mortgage. I, I kid you not. They're, they're not able to defend themselves. Now, I've had a lot of clients that that understand a Heckam is a Heckam and they say, yes, I have a Heckam and no one knows who that is, which is awesome because it gives them, them the opportunity to explain that a Heckam is a fantastic safe program that has no required monthly mortgage payments. So as we've said before in this meeting, realtors need to get the word reverse out of their primary language and call a Heckam a Heckam. Seniors need to do, do the same thing. I've been in this industry for right around 21 years. I've been fighting since day one about the negativity of the reverse. Bad news travels fast. The reverse, the reverse mortgage is, the Heckam reverse mortgage is a wonderful program, but we've got to get the positive education out there. And the first thing that I did is I got the word reverse out of my language and call it Heckam a Heckam.
now it's time to get into the nuts and bolts of this loan. I don't need realtors remembering all this stuff. It is important. The HECM does not have a credit score requirement. The HECM does not have a debt to income requirement. What? But it does have financial requirements. We have a financial assessment. We have income requirements, just not a debt to income requirement. So a married couple needs to have $886 a month worth of residual income, meaning after their expenses that show up on their credit report, after their property charges, property taxes, HOA, insurance, they have to have a married couple $886 a month worth of extra income to cover things like cable and water and sewer and health insurance and groceries. That's pretty basic. So to give you an extreme, your clients have $10,000 a month in income, but they got $9,000 in bills, all their expenses. That's $1,000 left over. No lender in the country will give them a loan because their, their debt to income ratio is horrible. They could have an 850 credit score. Not going to happen. A heck of yes, $886. They got it. A single person, $529 a month worth of excess income. So if your client has a thousand dollars a month income, that's it. And they have no debt, no monthly expenses that show up on the credit report. They would still qualify for this loan as long as they bought a reasonably priced house. No other lender in America would lend, lend this person money, but we will. Think about that. This program may save sales for realtors. You think someone doesn't qualify. If they're 62, maybe they will qualify with a HECM as long as they have the down payment money. Here's your responsibility. I do want you to remember this slide. Realtor's responsibility. I had a realtor come to me years ago, oh my gosh, close to 10 years ago, and he was actually the first realtor I spoke to about this HECM for home purchase, and he fell in love with it. And he was a friend of mine, and I noticed couple of months, maybe a year later, that we weren't referring business to each other. So I asked him, and he said, Tim, I don't really understand what to do when I have a purchase contract. Okay, I have a customer sitting in front of me. I got a contract. They're getting ready to buy a house. I know they're over 62 because I asked them. Don't be afraid to ask. It's okay. We're allowed to age discriminate. Heckums can age discriminate. You can't do this loan if you're 59. You've got to be 62. So ask the question, are you over 62? Are you 62 or over? So he says, okay, Tim, I've got, the, I've got the senior in front of me. I have a purchase contract. What do I do? I don't know. I didn't know at the time. So I got a copy of the purchase contract and I read it. Now, I'm not a realtor. I'm a loan officer. I'm the president of the Heckam Association as my volunteer role, but I'm in the streets in the ditches. I'm a, I'm a Heckam loan officer. I've been doing this for a long time, 21 years. So I looked at the purchase contract and I realized there's an FHA box, check that off. Ideally, the Heckam can use their title company, the Heckam lender can use, ideally we'll get into that later. But check off the FHA box, well what about the down payment? Well you could put 50-50, that's been accepted so far on all purchase contracts, but since you know the, the, the purchase price or what you're offering, go ahead and ask the lender for a pre-approval letter, which you should have that anyways. And, and look at what the down payment would be and what the loan amount would be and, and fill that in or put 50-50. But that's it. Don't be afraid to, to do the purchase contract. Just do it. There's something called an addendum. Addendums fix everything. I promise you, you're going to find, we're going to find things that need to be fixed. For an example, the HECM has different rules than traditional FHA financing. Different rules would include no seller concessions. Now, how do, you, how do you know that? Well, you don't. You do now. How do you know that? And are you going to remember that when you have a, a client in front of you and you're filling out the, the purchase contract? Probably not. No seller concessions. There's a couple of exceptions to that. One is that the seller can and should pay for stamps on the deed. The seller is allowed to pay for the lender's title policy. Whichever of the two title policies is more expensive. 
FHA allows that as long as it's usual and customary for the area. So those are two things the seller is allowed to pay for. Also home warranties the seller can pay for as long as it's usual and customary for the area. If the seller wants to pay $5,000 towards the buyer's closing cost, nope, not allowed. This particular FHA program, the HECM, does not allow for seller concessions with the exceptions of the ones I just mentioned. A lot of times people forget that and we do an addendum to fix it. The HECM still uses the HUD-1. The HECM does not use the settlement statement, closing disclosure. We also, the HECM, doesn't have TRID. We don't have TRID. The HECM is different. It's a different kind of loan. The reason I mention this is because title companies that don't do HECMs on a regular basis, or most of them have never done one, don't understand them. The fees are different. The endorsements are different. The calculation of of recording is different. There's so many things that are different. And almost always, almost always, the closing gets delayed. Your commission doesn't come on time. The sellers are upset. The buyers are upset. Both realtors are upset. The lender's upset. The title company's upset. Everyone's upset. So I know that it's usual and customary in Florida, in most of Florida, that the seller pays for the title policy. So let's keep that going. With that, the seller usually chooses the title company, uh, meaning the realtor chooses the title company. I promise you this, that unless they understand how to do a HECM, the closing is not going to go smooth. Things will be bubbling. Recently, we had a HECM for home purchase be delayed by three days, and the next one was five days late, actually seven days if you count the weekend. Five days. You talk about people upset. Now, clearly it was the title company's fault. They didn't have the software for the HUD-1. And, and the HUD that they did have was an older version that HUD no longer, or HECMs no longer accept. So please, please, please try to allow the lender to choose an experienced title company. If all the fees are the same and they match them up, and then what harm does it do? All can be is a better, smoother closing. Ready for a poll question? The HECM for Home Purchase Transaction Summary. Did you know that the average age for a HECM for Home Purchase, it, it changes ever so slightly from year to year, but it's 72. The average person who is buying a home in retirement, under the HECM program anyways, is 72 years old. Now, it's interesting that some people think that seniors don't buy homes. Remember this, our brain doesn't age. We, we get smarter and more mature. A 72-year-old knows that they can't climb Mount Everest, most likely anyways, that their body isn't able to, to windsurf like they used to. But their mind is still, they want what they want. You think that people that are 72 downsize, they usually right size. Now, upsizing maybe, but a lot of times a person works all their life and they re go into retirement and they've been in the home for 30 years, it's time to upgrade, it's time to retire in style. Maybe, maybe it's a less expensive home, maybe it's a smaller home, maybe it's a larger home, but what they want, possibly, is lakefront, golf front, swimming pool, jacuzzi. Maybe they want four bedrooms, maybe they want two bedrooms, but it's what they want, and sometimes what they want costs more. Maybe they want the 55 plus lifestyle, so don't think that a 72-year-old or an 82-year-old or a 92-year-old doesn't buy a home in retirement. Furthermore, this may shock you, many times the retiree will move one more time. They turn 62, they turn 68, they sell their home, they buy their final retirement home. And guess what? They're there for five or maybe 10 years and they wanna move. They want to move to the better side of the 55 plus community. They want to move to Florida. They want to move to a different part of Florida. They want a different lifestyle for whatever reason. Maybe they want to move closer to their children. Maybe their kids move closer to them. Sometimes kids move in with them. When I say kids, these are adult kids. The point is, is stay in contact with your clients. Chances are they're going to buy another retirement home. 
So 72 is the average age for a Heckam for Home Purchase buyer. But don't be surprised if an 82 year old, 88 year old, and 92, my oldest client for a Heckam for Home Purchase right now is 96. <laughs> Why would a 96 year old move? They have changes. They may go from a two story house to a one story house. They move, may move closer to their medical doctors. They may move closer to where there's services that they might need. Maybe the neighborhood has gone to the birds. Who knows? But just because you're 96 doesn't mean your brain thinks you're 96. And maybe this 96 year old is going to live another 10 years. Maybe they won't. But they want what they want and they deserve what they want. If it's moral and ethical to do so, then they should. All right, let's flip through some of these slides. Now we have different ones from 200, 300, 400, 500, 700 thousand dollar slides. So take a moment and watch as they go by and you'll see a, a sort of a pattern. Look at the percentages. I like to use 50-50. Easy to remember and it's almost always accurate. But look at the first slide at $200,000 and I highlighted the yellow age 72 just because it's sort of in the middle 62, 82, 72. Makes sense. But look at that. 48% down payment including the closing cost. Wow. And look down for the 62 year old, 54%. Now this is for a $200,000 house. As the house get more ex houses get more expensive, you'll see that number change ever so slightly. But look at the, the 82, 41% down. They can buy a $200,000 house for $82,000. I'm gonna say the rhetorical question again, how many $200,000 houses could you sell for $82,000? All of them. Look at the next slide, $300,000. 47% down for a 72 year old. 400,000, 47% down. 500,000, 47% down. 600,000, 46% down. 700,000, 46% down. Yeah, we're still at the around 50% range. Look at the 82 year old. $700,000 home for 39% down. $274,000 down payment, including the closing cost. A $700,000 house for an 82 year old for less than $300,000 down payment, cash money. How many of those could you sell? Oh wait, we're upsizing an 82 year old. No, we may not be. This is their lifestyle. Maybe they finally want to live on the golf course that's on the lake in the best 55 plus community in all of Florida. Who knows? For less than $300,000 down, you can make their dream come true. Maybe. You help them sell their old dilapidated house that's not in the best neighborhood anymore. Help them sell that house, get listing number one, and help them buy their next house, sale number two, at half cost. This program goes for more expensive homes. Let's look at the million dollar home. So the math works like this. The lending limit for the FHA Heckam is $765,600. However, Realtors can sell homes that are more expensive than that. The difference gets paid dollar for dollar by the buyer. In other words, the lending limit is 765,600. So 50-50 of that is their down payment. Everything above the lending limit, the current lending limit, would be dollar for dollar for the buyer. So in this example, we have a million dollar home that an 82 year old can put down 53% approximately, which is $528,000. That includes the dollar for dollar above the 765. We can do homes of any value with the Heckam, but the lending limit at the time is what's going to determine what the down payment's going to be. The lender needs to make sure the interest rate's as low as possible in order to maximize the funds, so interest rates will always be lower or very competitive to traditional financing. But why would a person want traditional financing in retirement? Why would they want to get into, into a 20 or 30 year mortgage when they're above 62? Now for a quiz. Can a person purchase a million dollar home or even a two million dollar home using a HECM? Let's talk about senior demographics, marketing. Did you know that there's a thousand people every day moving to Florida? 
every day. There's approximately 13,000, not 10, today there's approximately 13,000 people turning 62 every day in America. Every day in America, approximately 13,000, that's today's statistics, are turning 62, which means there's 13,000 more customers for you, and they're all moving to Florida, right? They're all moving to Florida. The population of Florida is approximately 24% seniors. In other words, of all the people that live in Florida, 20, 24% are actually senior citizens. According to NAR, National Association of Realtors, last year 35% of all home sales in Florida were sold to seniors. 62 and above. 35%. I've had realtors tell me, oh, I don't sell to seniors. Wait, uh, excuse me, are you a senior? Oh, you are? Click. Wow. I understand there's niche marketing. I understand I, I focus on millennials. I focus on, I get it. But if one out of three home buyers are 62 and above, why not throw that into the mix? Especially when you can market to 55 plus communities, you can market to a, a certain demographic. You can market to people that may be interested in purchasing a home at half cost. Imagine that, half cost homes. How many phone calls could you get if you were selling homes at half cost? Now, truly it's not half cost homes. Truly it's half down payment and finance the difference. But how many $500,000 homes could you sell if all $500,000 homes were $250,000? I once had a realtor tell me that all their buyers are cash. That's great, congratulations. People moving down from New York, Connecticut, California, they sell their more expensive home, they come to Florida and everything's on sale in, in their mind. I get that. But how many times have you taken a buyer out to the $400,000 neighborhood and the house they really want is $500,000? Wow, cash buyers is what we want. Cash buyers is what we want. We want cash buyers because they have to have 50% down. $300,000 cash could buy a $600,000 house if it's the right thing to do for your client. We want cash buyers. A realtor called me recently and said they've got a person with $90,000 in cash and they can't find a home. Can't find a home. Well, you can't. $90,000 just isn't enough. But $180,000, yes, it's possible. Somewhere in Florida, yes, you can sell a $180,000 house. So she was at her wit's end because the houses that they were looking at were not to their standards. And then she remembered, it's too bad it wasn't tip of tongue, she remembered about the Heckam. So she called me and she says, what do you think? And absolutely. They wind up buying a $125,000 home. So they, they got a reasonable home that fit their lifestyle. They put down half of one twenty-five. so what is that, about $65,000, $60,000. They got the other money in their pocket for retirement, cash flow no required mortgage payments. Awesome. Why should you include seniors in your marketing efforts? Referrals. Did you know that seniors love to socialize with people their own age? Don't we all? Don't we all socialize with people that are like us? So you help a senior buy the home of their dreams, their dream retirement home, and they've got two friends and they've got two friends and so on and so on if you remember the old commercial from the 80s. In any case, referrals. You help a person buy their dream home at half cost and no required mortgage payments and they're going to tell two friends. How many times have New Yorkers moved down to Florida and they've somehow brought their friends with them and they wind up buying in the same community? Why not? Half cost homes. By the way, this program is available in all states including the U.S. territories. But half cost homes in Florida, come on down. You can buy the place next door to me. Ideas for promoting the Heckam for home purchase. The ideas are endless. We could just go on and on and on. But think about this, farming. Why not go into an area, maybe it's a 55 plus community, maybe it's just a neighborhood, and find homeowners that are 62 plus that may want to move into a brand new home maybe a maintenance-free lifestyle, a townhome. Maybe they're in a manufactured home community because that's all they thought they could afford at the time of, of purchase. Maybe you can help them sell that manufactured home or the older home or maybe a home that's in disrepair or maybe it's a bad neighborhood. Maybe you can get a listing. Take the cash 
and help them buy into the community that they rather live in. Maybe it's a 55 plus community. Maybe it's closer to their kids. Sale number one, sale number two. Makes a lot of sense. The realtor advantage. This is a game changer. Marketing to seniors is going to change the way you do business, enhance your commissions, make more sales. The Heckam Association has all sorts of tools that you can ask us for to advertise half cost homes, homes with no required mortgage payments, retirement homes, lifetime home buyer. We have a seminar in a box that can help you do seminars to people that are 62 and above to sell more homes at half cost. Realtors take this to heart. Truly understand the Heckam. Truly understand how you can help a retiree's life. Helping seniors brings in more referrals. Another marketing tool we have is MLS. Under the notes section of your listings, you can actually put that other realtors can see, buy this home at approximately 50% down and no required monthly mortgage payments to those who qualify 62 and above. Now I'm paraphrasing, so don't actually use that. We have specially approved wording for that that's compliant. And guess what? Another poll question. To ensure that realtors understand some of the financial benefits of the Heckam. Half cost homes makes a ton of sense, but imagine this, helping a, a retiree do a refinance Heckam. Nothing in it for the realtor. Maybe it's the right thing to do. Maybe your client doesn't want to move, but mentioning the Heckam for refinance might be a way for you still to get a, get a sale. Moral and ethics, always remember, do the right thing. But here's an example. You talk to a client that maybe originally wanted to sell, but after they thought about it, they don't want to sell. Maybe the home is paid for. Let's use that as an example. Maybe the right thing to do. Maybe they, they said to you that the home is too big, too expensive, and I can't mow the grass anymore. I don't want to mow the grass anymore. Maybe the right thing to do is to help them with a the heckam for refinance and take this cash and help them buy a rental property. Pay cash for it. Now remember this, the Heckam must be on their primary home. So we're talking about their primary home. Help them, suggest to them to a refinance maybe in, in their best interest. And then you're able to take this cash and help them buy a rental home. Pay cash for the rental home. If you're a property manager or you can help your client with a prop property manager referral, they can rent this home and bring in cash flow. Now think about this. No mortgage payment on their primary home because it's a Heckam, and no mortgage payment on the rental property because they paid cash for it. And now they're generating a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month in cash flow with no mortgage payments. Think about that. You as a realtor made the sale on the rental property. You've helped a senior have a better retirement life, cash flow. And guess what? Their primary home goes up in value, their rental home goes up in value, you've actually increased their net worth and you did the right thing. FHA allows HECMs to be done on virtually any property, including condos if the condo is FHA approved. Manufactured homes, single family homes, cluster homes, cottages, villas, whatever you want to call those kind of homes, townhouses, not a problem. They just need to be move-in ready. Duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes. Once again, HECMs can be done on those pro properties as well. One of the units must be their primary home, but they can rent out the other units. Cash flow, increasing net worth. Makes a lot of sense. The HECM is probably the best mortgage in America, and it's definitely the safest. It is time for a poll question. You got this.
big fan of the Heckam. Been doing this 21 years. Love the program. I believe strongly that everybody that's 62 and above should look into this loan. I believe no matter how wealthy they are or how unwealthy they are, everyone should look into this program. But it's not for everyone. If a person is a veteran, maybe a VA loan with virtually nothing down is the right way to go. Having a monthly payment, mortgage payment in retirement life might be in their best interest. Maybe not even buying a home is their best interest. Maybe they should be renters for various reasons. Maybe they're planning on moving in a couple of years. Who knows? But there's lots of loan opportunities, mortgage opportunities available out there. There's down payment assistance. That's not a bad deal. You get ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars down payment assistance. Maybe that's the right way to go. Maybe a condo or townhome. Maybe a, a jumbo loan, a, a traditional large loan. Maybe it's another FHA or maybe it's a USDA. Who knows? But I believe that we all have the obligation to have a little bit of knowledge on various loan programs so we can guide our customers in the right direction. Now ultimately it's their decision. They may or may not want to do a HECM. They may or may not want to do a USDA loan or a traditional FHA financing. But we should all guide them and let them make a decision. Always do the right thing. 30 years worth of mortgage payments in retirement. Answer this on the next poll question. What is one to do with all this extra cash? 50% down payment to buy a home and no required monthly mortgage payments? What's one to do? I tell you, the biggest thing I hear all the time is they want to leave something to their family. And I agree with that. As a child, I would like to receive an inheritance. And as a parent, I'd like to leave an inheritance. But the number one person on the planet is, well, me. No, but in all seriousness, it's your client, right? They are the number one person. And I believe very strongly that they should do what's best for them first. And if there's something left over for the children, congratulations. Fortunately, this program, the HECM, is designed to make sure there's something left over for the children. It's designed that way. Interest rates are low, 50-50 loan, there's lots of equity in the house. Unless we had a housing crisis, and uh, it's going to work out fine. But it's not about the kids. So let's call it a legacy. We all want to leave a legacy. The best way to leave a legacy is during life. Not having expenses like a mortgage payment means that you can help out others. You can help your children, your grandchildren. Life legacy, I call that love, as opposed to the opposite, a legacy upon your death. Inheritance, that's a death benefit. I'm not opposed to inheritance. But here's a true story. A true story is I met a couple who was really concerned about leaving their house to their children. And I did my typical, when your kids don't want the house, they want the cash. And she was getting, husband and wife, but I was talking to her mainly, she was getting $60,000 more than she wanted. In her mind, she didn't want all the heckin' proceeds. I explained that there's a line of credit, you can leave it there, don't borrow it. But in her mind, she felt like, she was getting too big of a loan. And they had a million dollars in the bank, by the way. This was part of their financial plan to not bother their stocks and bonds. But she was stuck on the $60,000. And she really just didn't want it. And it's not the way the program works. FHA determines based on the home's value, the youngest person's age, that they're going to get X number of dollars. And if whatever they don't want stays in the line of credit can be borrowed later. But after talking to her, I realized that she was trying to preserve home equity and even though I explained it to her that she was, she couldn't get past that. So I realized that it was all about the legacy, the legacy. My suggestion to her, this was probably October, I said, how are your kids doing? She said, well, I've got three girls and like most of the girls, like most kids, they're, they'd always be doing better. Now this lady was in her 90s and the kids therefore were probably in their 60s, kids in their 60s. And she said, 
I said, why don't you give them a Christmas present? Why don't you give them your legacy in advance? Why not write them a check for Christmas? And her eyes lit up and she was excited. So I talked to her again after the new year and she said it was the best Christmas ever. She gave each one of them $5,000, not, not 20,000 each, but she gave them each 5,000. She wrote them a check and didn't tell them. And she gave it to them for Christmas. And she said it was the best Christmas ever. So leave a legacy. Help your clients do a heck of so they have extra cash, so they can give the love out before they're passing. That's what people really want. Oh, and by the way, the number one fear of seniors, the number one fear of our retirees is not dying. Could be public speaking, but the number one fear is running out of money in life. Running out of money and still have life to go. The number one fear is living too long. The heck of fixes that for the most part. Poll question. Last one. This is the last one and we can you qualify for the CE credits. You must have participated in the poll questions and also do the time in order to get the CE credits. So, question, not hard, it's all yours. Helping our seniors, helping our seniors because you care. Helping our seniors makes us feel good. It's sad to go into a Walmart and see a 75 year old, a door greeter, or go into Burger King and, and an elderly person ask you if you'd like to have fries with that. If people work in retirement because they want to, absolutely, it keeps people young. If they're working in retirement because they have to, I find that sad. And you as professional realtors can help people with that. And of course help yourself with a, with a listing. Think about this, especially the older population, especially the older population that will do without in order to hang on to what they have. I have met many people, it's typically the older generation, 80, 90 year olds, but I've talked to people that have a house that's completely paid for and they have a part-time job in their 80s to make ends meet. They have a house that's paid for. Or maybe the house is too big but they don't have the income to qualify for a different house. Or they don't think they can or they're not savvy enough. Maybe the house is too big. There's so many ways where a realtor can fit into that. You can list their house and move them into a maintenance free lifestyle, a town home, a 55 plus community. There's all sorts of ways that you can help them. And if there's no sale in it for you, well, you're doing, you're giving them education because you care. Always do the right thing. Helping a retiree do a heck of a refinance because it's the right thing makes us all feel good. The Heckam Association has been providing continuing education credits for many years. I personally have been providing these credits without the Heckam Association for almost 10 years. So the credits are a bonus, right? The education is where you're helping clients, you're helping yourself make more sales, but you're helping your clients, your senior clients. The CE is just icing on the cake. We're, we're certified by the state. So if you really enjoyed this class, you're welcome to attend a second time. You, you can't get credit a second time because you've gotten credit once, but tell your, your friends and your peers and your, and your broker Allow us, the Heckam Association, to offer this class in your office via virtual Zoom webinar. That's fine. But this is important information. And I've had realtors say, I don't want to tell anybody. I want to be the only, only realtor that knows this. I'm a big believer that the high tide rises all boats. The more people that know about this, the more people that are doing this. Here's a quick story. I had a customer call me. It was moving from North Carolina to Claremont, Florida, which is in the central part of Florida. And she had heard about the Heckam for Home Purchase and was going to buy in one of the Carolinas, but changed her mind because she wanted to be closer to her daughter. So she talked to the realtor that her daughter selected for, and the realtor said, I don't know what this Heckam reverse mortgage for home, I've never heard of that, sounds like a scam. 
Sounds like a scam. That, those are her words. So the customer did Google search and found me. I'm a, my paid job is a mortgage loan officer. She found me and she, she says, I'm moving to Claremont. Do you do Heckam's for home purchase? And of course, that's what my company does primarily as a, as a loan company. So I helped her. But the point is, is that the realtor didn't know anything about the Heckam. The realtor lost a deal. So she asked me, do you know a realtor that, that understands Heckam's for home purchase? And of course we do. We educate realtors all the time. But this is why you should share. Imagine she's moving into a 55 plus community. There's always phases, right? They start off with a certain kind of a house and as the phases move out, better and bigger and nicer homes are, are built. Maybe they're on the water, on the golf course. There's opportunities for realtors to get a listing and upgrade a person's retirement lifestyle because of the heckle. So the more realtors that learn about this program, the high tide rises all boats. So let's maximize your marketing power. You as realtors must focus on selling homes, not understanding the HECM or any loan for that matter in detail. It's important that you focus on what's, what you do best at. So here's my deal. I won't sell your home if you won't sell my loan. <laughs> How's that? I'd like for all realtors to understand enough about this program to be enthusiastic. Sales is the transfer of enthusiasm. So think about that. Know enough about this program to transfer that enthusiasm to your clients. Get the word reverse mortgage out of your language. This is a HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. This is a HECM for home purchase, an FHA loan. It's the safest loan in America, 50% down. You don't need to know a lot. Transfer that enthusiasm. Get your clients to call your loan officer call the Heckam Specialist. If you don't know one, the Heckam Association can refer you to one. But find somebody that understands the Heckam, not just somebody that could do them. Oh yeah, I do regular mortgages, but I can also do the, the reverse mortgage. No, you want somebody that understands the program. There's just, it's too complicated for just any loan officer to do. So you need a Heckam Specialist, very, very important. Maximize your marketing power. Get the conversation started. How do you do that? You use tools. Once again, I don't want realtors to be an expert at the Heckam. Use tools to get the conversation started. The Heckam Association can help with marketing, usually at no charge. Flyers that talk about half cost homes, some trifolds, signage, there's various things. The Heckam Association's mission is to spread the education about the Heckam, the FHA Heckam, the safest loan in America. You as realtors are there to sell the house. Get the conversation started by using tools to get the client to say, tell me more about this Heckam, this sounds interesting. Now here's the other thing I recommend, is don't expect the customer to call the loan officer. It's better to get their permission to say, let me have a Heckam specialist a certified Heckam specialist preferably, that will call you. Would, would that be okay? Because remember, you're selling a home, that's what you want to do. The customer for some reason may be afraid of calling a loan officer to be afraid of a sales pitch or high pressure. One thing about the Heckam is this is an education product. Product. This is an education sale. If they're not interested, if, if they don't get it, well maybe something else is better for them. There's never any high pressure. Seniors are a different breed in the sense that they have to be work with differently. Traditionally, loan officers are fast paced, bam, 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 electronic, submit this, upload this. A lot of times loan officers never meet the client. In the Heckam world, everything is slow paced. Now we still close in 30, 40 days, that's fine, but, but it's a different way of working with retirees. If they feel pressure, they'll go, go somewhere else. Having a mortgage payment for the rest of your life may be the worst thing ever. Having an optional mortgage payment for the rest of their life might be a game changer. The Heckam Association has lots of marketing materials. Take a look at this marketing material. This is probably our, our famous, the famous one. This is probably our best one. This one says very clearly how much you can buy this house for at this price based on a certain age. People love this, realtors love this. This is the kind of thing that you can leave on the counter for your listing. 
This is the kind of thing that you can put out in the community. But the Heckam Association has all sorts of tools, social media tools. The Heckam Association has lots of tools, online tools, flyers, trifolds, special MLS wording, it's yard signage, there's so much out there. If you've got some ideas, share them with us and ask us for, for the Heckam Association's marketing tools and let's partner, increase sales and help more seniors. The best tool is the internet website, halfcosthomes.com, halfcosthomes.com. Once again, there's no such thing as a half cost home. Half down payment, finance the other half. Halfcosthomes.com, click on it, check it out. It's designed for realtors to promote themselves. When you sign up for Half Cost Homes, and currently, by the way, the website's free, there is requirements. You have to be a knowledgeable realtor. You need to be a certified Heckam specialist. The Heckam Association has a certification program. And, and there is a fee for that, but it's very minor. Remember, the Heckam Association's goal is to spread the knowledge of the Heckam program. And the best way to do that is through realtors who will find the, the senior buyers. So half cost homes, when you meet the qualifications, you can get a free profile on this website. Now the website means nothing unless you promote yourself. So the website will give you an affiliate ID that you can put in your social media campaigns at the bottom of your email. When someone clicks on that website using your affiliate ID, any leads that come in, let's call them leads, go to you and then you can work those leads. It's a game changer. It's uh, probably the biggest thing that Heckam Association does. So check it out. Remember this, now that you've completed this class or will be in the next few minutes, you can become a certified Heckam Specialist, a designation, CHS, that you can have after your name. You can let the world know that you are certified as a Heckam Specialist. And with that, you can be on the website. With that, you'll get two hours of continuing education. And by the way, we do have a three-hour class available too. So we can always talk about that if you really wanted more education. How about one more poll question? One more. Easy peasy. So thank you. Thank you for spending two hours with us. We will open this up for questions. The, the webinar is officially over. If you want to sign out, you're welcome to. If you've got some questions or if you want to hear some Q&A, we've got a bunch of questions that have come in. We'll get through those. You're welcome to stay and listen. This is a fantastic program. Once again, my name is Tim Linger. I'm a certified senior advisor, certified HECM specialist, and certified reverse mortgage professional. And that's my, my most honored designation because that makes me one of only 150 that have the qualifications to be a CRMP. This class is available for your peers. We would be happy, the HECM Association would be happy to come into your office. Webinar would be best to present this class usually at no charge. Sometimes there's a fee for the continuing education credits, but we can discuss that. The Heckam Association's mission is to spread the information about the FHA Heckam, arguably the safest loan in America. Thank you. webinar is over. Thank you for participating. Let's do some Q&A. For those of you that would like to stay and learn more and ask a few questions, please stay. Let's go the next 10 or 15 minutes to just be open forum Q&A. I've got a whole bunch of questions to answer. The webinar is over, so if you want to leave and you've participated, two hours of continuing education is coming your way. But let's get into the questions. So question number one, a realtor is asking, why should I recommend a Heckam for home purchase? over a cash sale? Good question. Cash, you're closing next week. I get that. But a Heckam allows people to have cash and cash flow in retirement. Again, I get it. Cash sale, closing next week, commission, deals done. But is it the right thing to do? Is it the right thing to do? 
allowing a, a retiree to purchase a home at half cost and have optional mortgage payment is a game changer for the rest of their life. Next question is, what's in it for me? Well, it's actually a longer question, but I summarized it. What do I get out of this? Well, as a professional realtor, you get a sale, right? You get a sale, that's what's in it for you. Now, there's no commission. We're not gonna, as a mortgage company, the mortgage company's not gonna pay you part of the commission, just as a realtor is not gonna give the mortgage company some of your commission. So, what's in it for you? Well, there's a house sale. Now, if you use the Heckman properly, there could be two sales, a listing and a, and a new purchase. And possibly, not only is it a new purchase, but it's a upgraded purchase. So it could be, in a sense, two and a half sales. What's in it for you is additional home sales. Question, this could be risky. I don't want to risk a home sale by trying to push a heck em on somebody. I think that's a valid question. So here's what I usually say, is don't sell this loan. Just like a loan officer is not going to sell your house. Don't sell this loan. I want you to sell the sizzle. I want you to tell somebody that you should look into this program. It's a game changer. And then ask for their permission to give their information to a HECM specialist, a certified HECM specialist, a CHS. Let the CHS explain the program to see if they're even interested because it is a game changer. It's a fantastic retirement planning opportunity for them to learn how they can buy a home at half cost, save their cash, and have no required mortgage payments. So yes, do not risk your sale. Do not risk your sale. Don't try to sell this loan, just sell the, the enthusiasm and then transfer it over to the loan officer. Another question, how do I get seniors interested? How do I market, I guess, is the real question in this program. Well, my answer is this, is how do you get the conversation started? Now, you're a salesperson, you're a realtor, you're selling homes, but you're selling homes, you're not selling the loan. So how do I get the conversation started? My suggestion is use tools, use half cost homes tools, flyers, brochures, trifolds, whatever it is, but get the conversation started. Wouldn't it be ideal if they got the conversation started with you? So having a half cost home flyer, if you're not sure what that is, contact the Heckam Association, we'll get you hooked up, uh, usually at no charge, with a half cost home flyer. But, but do something, a piece of paper that you hand to them that they read and say optional monthly mortgage payments or half down and no additional required mortgage payments, something that gets the conversation started. That's my answer. Another question says, I don't really market to seniors. I don't really come in contact with seniors. My buyer base is younger people. Okay, well, you get what you ask for. So if you're not marketing to seniors, get with the Heckam Association and find out additional ways to market. It's just putting your information out there. You could take information about half cost homes along with your contact information such as your business card to local senior centers or, or community centers where seniors hang out. You could post things on Facebook and Instagram and maybe even Twitter. There's all sorts of ways but approximately 35 percent of every home that was sold in Florida last year were sold to people that are 62 and above. 24% of the population are 62 and above in the state of Florida. There's all sorts of people in the state of Florida that you could be marketing to, but I get it. You know, you, you find your little area and you sort of get stuck with it. I, I've had realtors tell me that I only sell to cash buyers. Well, they have that opportunity for whatever reason, and they're, they're running with it. Well, first of all, we want cash buyers, right? Because half down is all cash. So just change your marketing thinking process and look for seniors where seniors hang out. Does this program work in a down economy? I tell you, it works in a good economy and a, and a down economy. This program always works. I often say that I have a recession-proof business. It doesn't matter if the economy's bad, people need and want a heck of them. If the economy is good, people need and want a heck of them. Homes are always selling. In fact, potentially, you're in a better opportunity in a down economy it's all about attitude, you could also have a better opportunity in a good economy, right? It's all about your attitude, but the answer is yes. This program works in all types of economies. Question is, what is the future of the HECM program? Is it going to be around? Yes, the, the program's been around for over 31 years. The purchase has been around for over 10 years. 
the future is bright. The government wants to keep the FHA HECM going. Of course, lenders do and loan officers do and realtors do. The program is solid. It's backed by the federal government, FHA, HUD. It's solid. Interest rates have come down and there will always be low. And the reason is because this is an interest rate sensitive product. The lower the interest rate, the more we can lend. So it's our job as an industry to keep rates low. And of course, low rates interest more buyers. Question is, how do I overcome the misconceptions of the reverse mortgage? Well, first of all, it's a heckam. So my suggestion is get the word reverse out of your language the best you can. Call a heckam a heckam. Yes, it's a reverse mortgage. Possibly while you're explaining the heckam, home equity conversion mortgage, someone's going to say, well, that sounds like a reverse mortgage. Well, it is. The answer is yes. But my answer is this. Your answer should be this. Yes, a HECM is a type of reverse mortgage, but it's the good kind. It's the safe kind. It's the FHA version. A little bit lengthy there, but you can shorten that. FHA, this is the FHA safe type of reverse mortgage. There you go. How about five or six words? But get the word reverse mortgage out of your primary language. Call a HECM a HECM. This is the good kind. This is the safe kind. In fact, this is the safest loan in America. So the question is, how come there's so much bad press? Why is there so much negativity over the reverse mortgage program? So true, bad news travels fast. Bad news, sensationalized stories sell newspapers, sell the media, right? So unfortunately, as good as this program has always been, the press wants to pick up on it. You should never do a reverse mortgage. 10 reasons why you should not do a reverse mortgage. 10 reasons why reverse mortgages are a scam. Do a reverse mortgage, lose your home. Headlines of the local paper, widow loses home due to reverse mortgage. I read the article, it was actually about her not paying her property taxes, which you would lose your home if it was paid for. So the answer to that question is bad news travels fast. But I can tell you this, 100%, I may be going on the limb a little bit, but 100% of the people that understand the Heckam love it. 100% of the people that understand the Heckam love it. It's that good. It's just overcoming the bad press. We have a, a lenders association called the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association. We call it NERMLA. NERMLA has been for five plus years, they have a full-time marketing staff that it sends out press releases all the time, mostly on social media, but it does get published in some papers sometimes. And the good press is coming, but man, bad press sells papers. So. The question is, do people ever regret the reverse mortgage? I know I summarized that for whoever asked that question. Do people regret doing this? In my 21 plus years of doing this, not a single one of my clients, 100% I say, of my clients love the program and wish they had done it sooner. Every now and then I get a call from, from a concerned client who doesn't remember all the good things or maybe their, their kids call and say, oh my gosh, what did my parents get, get them? get themselves into. But once I explain the program and refresh their memory, 100% of my clients love the program. According to AARP, the HECM has a 96% satisfaction rate. Question is, isn't this program only for seniors who are having a hard time financially? Uh, again, I paraphrase that question too, but that's the gist of it. Is this just for poor people? Is this the loan of last resort? I saw that in the headline one time. Is that a loan of last resort? No, I tell you. This program is good for anybody of all income levels and asset levels. Millionaires do this loan because it makes financial sense. Yes, a lot of people with less income and less assets want this loan too. Not everyone qualifies. But yes, this is a loan for people of all income and asset levels. And just because a person has a million dollars in the bank does not mean that they don't need this loan. We get a lot of referrals from financial planners. And as you probably know, financial planners typically do not deal with people with, with a small net worth. In fact, a lot of financial planners say that if you don't have a million dollars in the bank or a half million dollars in the bank, they don't, even, they don't even want you as a client. So paraphrasing the next question is, what about the kids? Do they approve or disapprove of the HECM? The answer is that 95%, 95%, what I've found over the years personally, 95%, if the kids get involved, if the kids understand, if the kids will listen, 95% of the kids will support, encourage their parents to do a HECM. The reason is because most kids 
or understand that they want their parents to be independent. Parents want to be independent. They want what's best for their parents. Now, as a child, we all want to receive an inheritance, and as an adult, we all like to leave an inheritance. That's, that's the legacy part we talked about in the webinar. But in reality, no one wants to be burdened. The sandwich generation, where the kids have kids and the kids have parents, the sandwich generation, they don't want to be burdened with their family, their parents, and the, fam the parents don't want, to be, don't want to burden their kids. A lot of times, the kids don't even live close to, to mom and dad. So once again, 95%, 19 out of 20, kids support the heckam when they understand it. Question is, is when is a heckam a bad idea? When is the heckam not the appropriate loan for a senior? Boy, that might be a tough question to answer. Uh, I'm a believer that everybody that's 62 and above should look into this loan. I believe that everyone should look into this loan to see if it's right for them. And I think it would be inappropriate to say that everyone should do this loan. Certainly this loan is not for everybody, but I believe that everyone should look into it. So when is it not appropriate? If they don't have enough down payment money, it's not only not appropriate, but it's not possible. If they don't have enough credit, good credit, if they don't have enough income, it's not appropriate. Not everyone should be a homeowner. In fact, let's go back to that. 2002, I think, 2002, some senators said, Everyone should be a homeowner. Let's make it easier to get financing. And then over the years, gradually until 2007, uh, there was a big boom. Big boom. Real estate market boomed. Homes went up in, in value and then we had this big crash. Not everyone should be a homeowner. Some people need to be renters. Not everyone can care for a home. Not everyone can maintain the home. Not everyone can be res are responsible enough to pay the mortgage payment or their homeowner's insurance or homeowner's association, right? Not everyone should be a homeowner. So when is this program not right for somebody if they're not responsible and or they're not able to be a homeowner? They don't have the cash. But bottom line is cash is king and cash flow is king. So I would say that more times than not, this loan is appropriate for most people. All right, we have time for one more question. And the question is, is would I, Tim Linger, do a heckam when I turn 62. All right, no, absolutely not. Will not. No, I, I, I say that in jest. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I sometimes wish I could speed up the clock because it makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm working on paying down my mortgage as low as possible, if not completely get my house paid off for that opportunity for me to do a heckam. And at 62, I will probably be working a little bit longer. So I'll delay my social security but I'll go ahead and do a heckam as soon as I can. And the reason is because of the line of credit feature. I'm going to do a heckam as early as possible. And I'm going to try not to take any money, probably won't. And I'm going to let it grow. I'm going to delay Social Security. And if I do need some income at 62, I'll still delay Social Security, but I'll use my home equity, my heckam home equity, to supplement my income. But yes, absolutely. I'm going to do this loan as soon as I turn 62. So thank you. We are out of time. It's been a fantastic two plus hours. Thank you all for that has hung out with me for the last 10 plus minutes. So we are done. We're going to turn off the webinar. Please go ahead and email us your any additional questions and let's go make some sales. Thank you.